Hi everybody. We are live at my studio and I've got some camera help today. Are some people joining in there, Angela? Are you seeing a few people? I don't see anybody yet. Okay, we'll just give them a minute to come on board. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hi, Nina. Hi, Nina. Welcome. Hi, Heather. Heather McClure. Oh, hi, Heather. How are you? So today, I'm just going to lead you into my studio and uh, show you a few things in there. So right now, this is like in the studio itself, we have these big doors. So these doors can um, open, we can open them up so that uh, this all becomes one room when we have a workshop, right? We good? So come on in, let's go in and have a look. So, this is my little world right here. This is like where I live and where I thrive. And when I go home at night, you know what my other studio is like because when you go home, because we did our first lives from there and we'll do some more lives from there. So um, right today, what we're working on is um, we are working on uh, our newsletter list. So that's what I was working on right before I left. I haven't hooked yet today, so I'm gonna hook with you now. So I always check Angela that there's lots of people that before we join in, and uh, is there, can you tell that there's quite a few people joined us yet? We have 207. Oh, that's great. Okay, great. So I think I'll get started right away. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm taking my purse with me. So I think I'm going to, I'll start with my purse because I got this great purse. And I was thinking this morning, you know, when you're curious, like I was always really curious about my mother's purse, right? I always wanted to get in there. Right? Didn't you always want to get in there? And so when I asked for feedback this week of things that people want to know, they want to know one of the things that kept coming up, and these were the words that were repeated, nooks and crannies. <laughs> they want to get into the nooks and crannies of the studio. And as I was packing my purse this morning to come here, I thought, well, now that's a nook and a cranny, if you ever see it. And what I have in here now is completely different than what I had this morning. So let's have a look in here. So this purse was a gift from Jennifer Field, who lives here in Amherst. She bought it for me because she had one like it and I kept admiring it. So there's my lunch containers. <laughs> if we look in here. And then there's this bat, this where the wild things are. That was a favorite book of mine um, when my kids were little. And in there, I've got all kinds of junk. Like I have everything I need here for a weekend away, basically. Like my Listerine, my chargers. I always keep one of these in here, our six, the six little sketchbooks that we sell, we sell them for $19.95. And actually, this one is full. I need another one. Um, I put the other one in the car. There's some nice drawings in here. And so there's all my gear. And then I carry my computer in here. And then I always carry like a disposable, a Loki bag. I love those. So, so you don't have to use disposable bags all the time. And then there's my sunglasses. I love my sunglasses. I just got to put them on because they're so cute. Aren't they great? I just think they're the best. Anyway, I love those. They're my prescription, so if I wear them around, I can't take them out. Got my, got my, uh, got a clip that my hairdresser gave me because she said, "Look, if you you're feeling bad, you can just go like this and just put your hair up with one of these clips." And I think like she's a smart one. That one, that's Heather Trenum. So I have that in case I've got a, having a bad hair day. Oh, I've got a six pack of oh a three pack of socks for my walking. <laughs> well, oh, I got two masks. I've got a mask with bears on it. Our road is full of bears. Every day when I walk in the morning, I've got two masks here, just in case I go somewhere. Um, and every day when I walk in the morning, I see the composters turned over. And then I have I have this mask that Brenda made, and it's all the writings from The Little Prince. And I think I love it. I was thinking about it, and I the night before she came in and I bought this mask off her, I've been reading The Little Prince because I read that it was one of Fred Rogers' favorite books and I thought, oh, Fred Rogers liked it. It's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. Did I say I have my hairspray? And usually in here, before I leave, I'll put my computer in here and, and then I have two books that I take home with me every night. And this book right here, I always like a hardcover book to keep, to keep track of my ideas. So I like a book with a, with a board back. And this book here is where I've been keeping track of your ideas. Because I asked last Sunday on my newsletter, I asked if you would, so I have to pile all this back in here. And then when I go tonight, I'll put my computer in here. 
and this book, and then my day timer. I try to keep track of what I do every day and what I have to do, which is nothing for July and August. Like, I just have to be here and work in the studio. And I'll put all that back in here. And usually, sometimes I carry a bigger bag. A lot of times I carry my big old brown bag. But it's amazing what I can get in here. It's quite something, really, isn't it? So there's a nook and cranny for you. If you want to know the nooks and crannies of my life, that's a good place to start. But I was always, always, always curious about my mother and what she had in that purse. And I would, I would take her purse when I was a little girl and I would look through it. And I would go through it and go through it and go through it. And I'd always be happy because I'd always find a stick of gum in there. And that was like a big deal to me. I don't know how old I was, like four or six. But you know what? It's good to remember who you were as a little child. And that's one of the reasons why I'm reading The Little Prince right now. Um, and, but you know what? I need some help. I need some help understanding it. I don't fully understand it. And I think I should, but I don't. So I showed you that book where I kept track of your ideas that you had for this show. And I think uh, I think we can put it down there. Uh, let's put them in here, Angela, and then we can, I can show them the ideas on the... We might have to switch it back. Just give us one second, folks. I'm gonna go in here like this. There we go. And now I'm gonna switch it so you can see me. There we go. And I can show you all the ideas that you gave me. And then I'm gonna show you a rug that I'm working on. So look at this. For Facebook Live, so I sent out a note on Sunday and I said, um, I sent out a note on Sunday and I said, you got any ideas for this Facebook Live? Because we're getting like 5,000. Oh, hi, Val Kennedy from Nashville and Marie-Christine Gross from France, Goss from France. Um, yes, uh, Katie O'Brien, you're asking about the volume of the show. That's for you to control. Yeah, um, you, you, it's usually in the bottom right-hand corner of your video. So look at these. And so I sent that out on Sunday. Well, that meant all day Sunday and all day Monday, I was writing down and keeping track of these ideas. And so now whenever I have an idea, I have these little file cards over on my desk. And so this was the ideas, these were the ideas that came in in the last couple of days. So you really put me to work and uh, it really got me thinking about what I wanna do uh, and how I want, what I wanna teach you here. So uh, Kate, I bet you're interested in this rug, aren't you? I know, I know, I know all about it. I'm interested in it too. Anyway, it's gonna be good. So. No, it's good. I don't need to. We're gonna we're gonna see the rug. So, um, so this is the rug we're gonna be talking about today, and we're gonna come back to that in a minute. So before we do that, I wanna ask you a couple of favors. Can you share this video? That's important to me. Last week you shared the video, and we had. 1,000 more people uh, watch the video. And the way I feel about it is that if, if two of those people start to hook rugs, then two people have a richer, better life. So please share the video. It's really uh, important uh, to me and it could be really important to somebody else. The other thing I'm gonna tell you is if you join my newsletter, there's, you get lots of good stuff. First of all, you get the oat cake recipe. You get um, a free five video course and you get $10 off your first order um, if you join my newsletter list. So you just go on the website and join my newsletter list. Now I'm gonna tell you one more thing. Wild with Wool, we are nearly at 10,000 members on Wild with Wool. So that's pretty good. So on Wild with Wool, people share their, it's, it's like not a site that we, uh, do much on but share pictures of hooked rugs. Hi Haley Perry, my niece is there. Thank you for watching. It's always nice to nice to hear from Loop by Loop Studio. Um, and my niece is in Massachusetts and has a rug hooking studio there. And so what I want to talk about today is about your feedback that you gave me and then I'm going to get to this rug. So one of the things, oh Daphne Lewis from Collier's. I had an aunt in Collier's. Uh, yeah, uh, um, I did in Collier's, Newfoundland. Um, uh, yeah, that's so nice. It's nice to see your names pop up. So one of the things I want to talk about uh, today is about critiques. And what is a critique? Because that was the other thing that you asked me. I was basically asking for a critique of this Facebook Live. And if you had any feedback to give me, good or bad. And, and, and I really appreciate it. Hello, Pam Bartlett. Um, and one of the critiques I got was uh, uh, 
about saying hi to my friends. And I just want you to know that it's not always my friends who I'm saying hi to. It's the people who comment on the video, right? Because they said, oh, you know, it makes me feel left out when you say hi to your friends. But if, you know, I just comment on the people like Virginia Woodrow just said hi to me. So I just said hi back. So that's, that's what it's about. But I think um, critiquing is an important part of rug hooking. Uh, we have to look at our, our rugs critically and every rug that I make, I look at really critically, okay? So, um, oh, you, well, if you saw that video yesterday, like I was looking at it pretty harshly because I was pulling it out faster than I could hook it in. It was like, <coughs> gotta cut this. I was so unhappy with my rug. So sometimes you're unhappy with a rug and you want someone to uh, give you some feedback. So I would say, hello, Andre Benson, hello, any long champs. Um, so these are the things that I think are important if you're seeking a critique. Years ago, I asked a woman named Doreen Wright, who was a very traditional rule-based rug hooker, if she would critique my work. I said, I, I wouldn't mind. And we were sitting and the room, when I think back on that memory, the room seemed kind of blue and gray. And we were sitting in this room and she said to me, well, you do things the way you like to do them. So I could critique your work, but really I would just be critiquing it based on the way I like to do things, not the way you like to do things. So did everybody get that? Cause that's important. Let's go back and listen, listen to this again. Okay. So I said to Doreen, could you critique my work? And she was a very traditional straight, uh, you know, laced about rules rug hooker. And this was like 25 years ago. And when rules were way more important in rug hooking, I think. And she said, Deanne, I could critique your work, but I want to do things the way I like to do things. And you like to do things the way you like to do things. So I don't think it would be a lot of value to you for me to critique your work. Well, she was smart, right? You know, she was like, oh, she was in her 70s then. She was a wise woman. And I said, yeah, you're right, because I'm not going to change the way I do things. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be open to critiques. Critiques are really important. They're a really important part of learning. But you, if you're gonna critique someone's work, first of all, you have to understand that the way they do things is the way they do things. And if you're gonna be critiqued, you're gonna to wanna to get someone to critique your work who has a similar values and understands your perspective. That's really important, okay? so. Um, like, so who do you ask? Well, ask someone who understands what you're trying to do, right? Who, who gets it and who has an open mind. And the other important thing about critiquing is um, if you're gonna critique someone's work, bring out the good first, like find the good in it because there's good in everybody's work. So find the good. And then if you see one or two things, offer, uh, offer them choices. To, to the way they could do it differently. Hello, Remy. Um, they could just offer them, uh, offer them choices about the way they could do something differently. I think that's, that's important. So, you, you, you know, we have this old notion of art critiques. I, I don't very often criticize other people's work. It's not for me to do. I think everybody sees things differently. Um, there's work I like better than others. There's work I don't like it uh, very much. But I can always find something good in people's work. And that's what we want to bring out for people. We want to bring out the good and we want to give them options of how maybe, you know, like I would say, um, like if I had been looking at this rug yesterday, I would have said to someone, I, who someone who owned this rug, like me, I would have said, have you, have you thought about reworking the area in the corner, maybe in a different way? I wonder if all those lines are competing. Um, what are some ways that you could work it differently? Okay, so those are, the kinds of, those are the kinds of things you want to do. So one of the things you asked me to do in your critique of this sh show, our Thursday live show, was to talk about critiquing. And I have like 400 other things that you want me to talk about. And I thought I could do them all today, maybe. Do you think, Angela, we could get them all done today? And then we could just like stop the show. We could just do everything today. Like oh, just go wow. for it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the things I think, I always think about Doreen Wright and what she said to me, that you do things the way you want to do them. 
So now I'm going to show you um, some, we do have a great wool for this week and I'm going to show you two, two good wools. We don't have much of either uh, to go on. So remember to share this video. If you're not a member of Wild With Wool, join Wild With Wool. It's really fun. It's just a Facebook feed that comes up. Um, and let's get down to this rug that I'm working on now. There we go. I want to get you there. So this was a rug. This was a pattern that I drawn, a one kind, one of a kind hand drawn pattern. And now it's going to be just a one of a kind rug. And I was working on it yesterday. And I'm going to slide this over. And in this corner, I had drawn all of these lines and all I could see were pumpkins. So I saw burns and pumpkins and it just was not working for me at all, even though I liked the lines. And and I wasn't feeling anything, like I wasn't feeling strongly about it. I wasn't, there. I had no emotion with this rug, except for I loved these burns that are right here. Can you see them? Just a big, big barn doors. And and I live in on the Tantramar Marsh, very near the Tantramar Marsh. And there are big burns everywhere uh, on that marsh, but most of them are disappearing because of course people don't need hay barns anymore here. We, uh, we no longer need hay barns because we see them wrapped in the white fabric, right? Uh, the white sort of, I think it's made out of cornstarch. It does, some of it is, it's kind of dissolves so that people don't have to store their hay anymore. So these barns are all falling down. And then the marsh itself is very low. It was, it was diked by the Acadians to in, uh, I'm not sure. I think it was like this. I'm not, I can't even say what years that happened, but, uh, in the 1700s, perhaps you'd have to look, you'd have to Google it for sure. But the, the mics, um, the, the dikes are, were built by the Acadian people and they saved the marsh and made it a landscape so that they could raise hay, raise hay on it and grow things on it and have their animals on it. And the marsh is a very beautiful ecosystem. It's really something that I treasure about living here. And we walk on it a lot. So these waves, sometimes people say that, and there was a, there was a big tidal wave in the 20s here in Amherst and, and the marsh was underwater. And people say that it is an ecosystem that the, the, the dike system needs to be saved. So now I have, I decided to do these waves in the corner and they made sense to me, right? The rug started to make sense. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, then, then the rug kind of had a reason for being. So over on this end, I did more waves and more lines. And all of these lines came because my daughter had sent me a picture that she drew uh, of Citadel and of, and all these, and she had all of these lines. And I thought, I'm gonna add a lot of lines to this. So so direction was coming from everywhere, right? That's That's what I started doing now. I want to show you a new yarn that I'm going to put in here. And we only have, I want you to know we only have five of these. I have ordered more and we may have more next week. But my grandmother, whom I never met, uh, my grandmother was a rug hooker. Both my grandmothers were rug hookers. This yarn is a jute yarn and it has a little bit of acrylic wrapped around it. I'm just going to show you. Okay. And it's called Killam. K-I-L-I-M. And it is on our website now. And I've got it in green and I've got it in red. So I'm going to cut that. But my grandmother, according to my father, because like I said, I never met her. When she ran out of wool, do you know what she'd do? This is how passionate she was about hooking rugs. She would take a burlap bag and she would pull apart the burlap bag and use the strands of jute and hook a rug. And, and there's pictures of a rug hooked with jute. So... So she would unravel, hang on, I'll show you what she would do. It's incredible to me. So she would take the burlap and she would unravel the burlap like that. And she would dye it and then she would hook it. So there we go, I'll just, I'll just hook that burlap. Now that's not something we wanna be doing too much of because we know burlap doesn't have a but you can do it. I'm gonna bring you in with me, okay? No. So 
So she would unravel it and hook it. And that was a common thing. So this yarn, right here, just like that. So you can hook jute on jute. Now, this yarn was um, used, uh, this, this yarn is jute and it's covered with a little tiny bit of acrylic yarn. So I am going to take my wave that is encroaching on the marsh and on the marsh barns and I'm gonna hook one line of it. And the reason why I bought this yarn is because I thought about my grandmother, this woman I never knew, Emma Fitzpatrick, Emma Wakeham Fitzpatrick she was. And uh, I thought about how she, how she uh, loved to hook so much that she took apart jute. Isn't that amazing? Like, are you guys like, I, I still, I've heard that story. Like I heard that story 30 years ago. And when I repeat it to you, it just amazes me. Like that, it amazes me that I have this history. And Haley, you have that history too, if you're listening. That's your history too, Haley, my niece. Are there any questions, Angela? We'll take a couple of questions. Um, Elizabeth. Yeah. I'm wondering, actually this is a really interesting question. Is it important to create, or sorry, is it important to critique basic technique? Um, I think, is it important? That is a really good question, Elizabeth. Thank you. Is it important to critique basic technique? Well, once a woman came to my studio and she was hooking these loops and they were so enormous and they were so floppy, I wanted to say, those are big floppy loops, like bring it in a little bit, right? And then I remembered I remember what my loops looked like to say Doreen Wright uh, 25 years ago, you know, and what they looked like to traditional rug hookers. And I said, you know, you've got no business like looking at someone else's loops and telling them, you know, how high those loops would be. That's just the way I feel, right? You may feel differently. So, you know, we want some technique. Like you don't want to carry your strands right across the back because it's going to make it really easy for people to pull it out. But in art, I think it's in, it should be encouraged to explore technique and to play with technique and to, because that is the only way you discover. So that would be my answer. And I would tell you that that is not the right answer. That is just an answer. And it's my point of view. So I'm loving how this is looking. Can you see this? That little bit of jute. Uh, and of course, the marsh is full of hay and straw, which jute is, uh, you know, kind of... So I'm going to stop right here. And I'm going to... Because this is the bottom of the mat. And I'm going to pick it up over here. And what I think I'm going to do with this mat now... I was wondering about these circles over here. Can you see those circles over here? Do you think I should uh, think I should put some circles in here or should I just continue and have a nice solid area that's reminiscent of those solid areas? You guys can weigh in and tell me what you think. I gotta warn you though, I'm gonna do what I want. But, <laughs> but I'm interested to know if you think these circles should be, if we need like more lines over here or not. So this yarn is Kill em. It's on the website. And I got to tell you something else, but you're not going to really be that happy, are they, Angela, about this other thing that we got to talk to them about? I don't know. I've got a couple of quick questions. For okay. You. What is the big whitish yarn you're using on there? Oh, it's big merino. I think I got, I could, if I was a, if I was a singer, I'd sing a song about big merino because it's so beautiful. And they're wondering why you didn't outline on this rug. Oh, I did outline on this rug. Look at that. That's an outline of the barn. I outlined the barn. And then all of these white lines, they're outlined. So there is outlining on it. It's just subtle. We had a lot, a lot, a lot of people want to talk about outlining. We had a lot of questions about outlining. And we will be talking about outlining in the coming weeks and months. Because you guys have made it possible for me 
to have a little show and I'm, you know, like I'm the youngest of seven sisters, right? I have six sisters. When we get together on Zoom, we get together every Friday, um, every Sunday night on Zoom and it's getting a little better. But if they're there, if anybody, if even one of my sisters is watching, sometimes I have to go like this to get attention. Like I have to raise my hands. I have to go, I'll just show you. I have to go like this on the Zoom so that somebody will listen to me because I'm the baby of the family. So you guys have really like, you guys like have given me a little platform to visit with you and I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I wanna be respectful of it and I wanna make sure that um, I'm mindful of your time and, oh, you know what? I made a little mistake here. I've got this blue up here. I think I'm just gonna roll with it. I've got, see here, I've got a like blue cloth, but I think I'm just gonna take this up to here, up to the blue cloth. Why not? Or should I just keep going? Hmm. I think I'll just leave it. I like it. Dan, Debbie wants to know if you have yep. any of your grandmother's rugs. No. My grandmother's rugs were, like, beaten with salt water off the wharf just to clean them. That's how they cleaned them. They, my aunt told me she would take them down to the wharf and just dip them in the salt water and then beat them with a stick. <laughs> That's how they were cared for. And when they left Outport, Newfoundland, they didn't take any rugs with them. No. No, I'm going to keep going with this. So that's the yarn I'm gonna to use today. And I think it just, when you have a yarn that's not wool, um, I think it should be used for details. Cause I think if you're working on linen and you're putting everything else in, in there, I stay away from acrylics and you know, I just, a yarn like this is used for detail. I just want it, want it to, to last. So um, this is just a detail and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn for detail. So the other thing we have to tell you is that there are peony twists. We dyed it again because we had some. We had to do a few. But there are how many, Ange, of peony twist? Ooh. Like not very many, right? Maybe, no, maybe four. There might be four big merinos and peony twist. Okay, I'm going to come back to you now. All right, there we go. There are like four big merino peony twist, okay? And I think there's like two or three big sister peony twists. So if you want them on the website, uh, they're on there, just go grab them. And we may or may not do them again. I, we, we are not promising to be matching dye lots cause we just want to have fun with you guys in the studio. And then this is a new one. It's peony twist, but it's the sparkling Stellina. And if you look at it, can you see that sparkle? Oh, it's so nice. So hello, Joanne Buck and hello, Roseanne Jaquette from from Sierra Vista, Arizona. I'm so glad you're here. And uh, yeah, this is Peony Twist, and this was inspired by a bouquet that Joe brought in. And Angela, you got anything to tell people? I think we're getting our times about up now. I'm yeah. gonna show them a little bit of hooking. Next color I'm gonna choose. Well, this is something that I've kind of been wondering myself, and it was a question brought up at the beginning by Heather McClure. When yep. we were walking through. Yep. What's up the stairs? Oh. I've worked here for two years, and I do not know what's up those stairs. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're going to use those stairs in another video. So I'll tell you then. I'm going to keep it a secret. No. Uh, should I just... Uh, there's nothing. <laughs> There's a there's a building there it's a big building and there's an accountant up there there's a massage oh, therapist the offices mm -hmm. oh. there's offices upstairs there's a massage therapist and there is a mapping company so um that's what's up there I know Heather but I know it's like what's behind the black door maybe I'll start a show sometime and come down the stairs uh oh Briggs and Little is on hi how are you and Roberta Hancock and Pugwash and Martha Dean Burns how do you dye big merino do you soak it 24 hours or overnight well merino wool you never need to soak merino for 24 hours dye will only go so far uh, uh so um yeah no you don't have to merino wool takes takes dye very quickly yeah very very quickly uh what time is it angela it is 2 30. okay hi donna. Right. Say hi. hi donna hi donna hello heather durant from florida heather durant from florida heather gave me a beautiful opportunity once oh, she mary. she She's asked on oh mary's chair. on there hello mary on her beach chair um, Heather Durant from Florida once invited me to speak to the ATHA conference in Halifax. And it was the first time I ever spoke to a big group of people. We spoke for uh, half an hour and there was people from all over North America. And I was just so, I was so happy. It was so fun. 
So, uh, yeah, the, one of the massage therapists from your spa retreats up there. Hello, Loretta. Okay, well, I think we should wrap it up. So I'm going to lead you out with my hooking and I'm going to choose my next color. So Peony Twist, shop. Be sure to shop on the website. Remember, I have all of these ideas. And if you have more ideas, keep them coming. Uh, I don't mind. I don't mind hearing. And, uh, and you know, today I wasn't nervous. So that's good because every other time I felt kind of nervous. But today... I feel kind of relaxed. That's good. Hey, okay. so let's, let's, I'm going to hook you out. Okay. So what color am I choosing here? This is a Briggs and Little yarn and it's kind of a, it might be called seafoam green. You don't know what color that is. Do you, Ange? This one here. No. No. Uh, yeah, it's on. You can see it on the website. It's so I'm doubling up, and I'm just gonna hook Briggs and Little. And did anyone give me any feedback on the circles and what we should do there? Did they say what? Did they give any opinion? I'm not seeing any. Okay. So this is the things I want you to do. Share the video. That's the most important one. Share the video so that other people we can get other people hooking and we can share the joy of this craft that we have. It's really it's really important. Are you gonna put a border on that band? Uh, no, no, because this wave is like coming right out of the ocean, and the ocean is kind of boundless. So I don't um, think. Sorry, somebody wanted to know if they could see the. I guess you can't really see the full rod. You can't really. I can I can pull it back a little bit, and you can see. So I'm just putting in another row here, and then I'm gonna decide. So there is the full, there's the full rug. So that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I, Bye love, I love that you listen. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And uh, keep going. And hello, Dialonia Albertson-Cook, Shelly Richardson. Oh, no circles. Okay, thanks. I appreciate that. Hello, Denise Donnell, Mary Alice Oatman, all people I've never met before, I think, but I'm really looking forward to meeting you someday. Bye-bye. Thank you.